We have an empowering story of an openly gay Florida high school senior who says he was told he could not talk about the state's parental rights in education bill, also referred to as Don't Say Gay, in his graduation speech. Xander Morris is standing by. We're going to talk to him in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at what happened when Xander delivered his speech on Sunday. This morning, a bittersweet moment for this Florida high school graduating senior. 18-year-old Xander Moritz, the first openly gay class president at Pineview School, says he was forced to censor his words during his commencement speech. That is why I must discuss a very public part of my identity. This characteristic has probably become the first thing you think of when you think of me as a human being. As you know, I have curly hair. Xander referencing his curly hair as a euphemism for his sexual orientation. As a plaintiff in the lawsuit against Florida's so-called don't say gay law, Xander sharing what he says is at stake. There are going to be so many kids with curly hair who need a community like Pineview and they will not have one. Instead, they'll try to fix themselves so that they can exist in Florida's humid climate. Just weeks ago, Xander writing on Twitter, my principal called me into his office and informed me that if my graduation speech referenced my activism or role as a plaintiff in the lawsuit, school administration had a signal to cut off my microphone. The school, who signed off on the final speech prior to the ceremony, responding in a statement. Students are reminded that a graduation should not be a platform for personal political statements. Should a student vary from this expectation during the graduation, it may be necessary to take appropriate action. And Xander and his attorney, Roberta Kaplan, are both joining us now live. Thank you both so very, very much. And Xander, of course, I'm going to start right with you. Congratulations. You're a senior. You're graduating. Had that speech. Anyone who speaks at their graduation feels pressure to do well. But as we just heard, you, you felt you had a lot at stake personally and as a student activist. So what was it like to look out at your classmates and deliver that speech yesterday, Xander? It was an amazing moment. This is a group of people that have supported me and my work for the last four years. I'm the first class president that's been elected all four years and they've always really had my back. And there was a lot of hate and a lot of fear surrounding the speech about what people were gonna do if someone was gonna react poorly because it, it, was, a, it was really present in the community, that hatred and that fear. And so I was worried and I knew that there was a potential to cut the mic and just to have a standing ovation like that mm. and a response like that from all of these people was amazing and it, it was really a great finale for four years of high school. Many of your fellow students wore Say Gay stickers in support of you. In, in your speech, you were very clever in using that euphemism. Instead of saying gay, you said curly hair. Tell us what went into that decision. It was a really dehumanizing decision because I had to take something I had written and was really proud of that just discussed my identity and my human rights and I had to find a way to be clever to discuss who I was. Um, I knew that going into this I was not going to risk A, a platform because that's going to exist less and less for LGBTQ plus students in Florida mm -hmm. and B, I wasn't going to risk a celebration that hundreds of my friends have spent four years working for. And so because the district affirmed that they supported action if I brought up the lawsuit or the advocacy around it, I knew that the threat to cut the mic was very real. So I wasn't going to let that happen. And I just had to be clever about it. But I shouldn't have had to be because I don't exist in a euphemism and I deserve to be celebrated as is. And you did so well in how you went about doing that, Xander. And you, you talked about the lawsuit. So if you don't mind, I'm going to bring in, uh, she likes to go by Robbie instead of Roberta, the lawsuit uh, fighting Florida's so-called don't say gay law. The school had to approve his speech, which he says led to his using the euphemism that you just heard. What do you take away from that, Robbie? Yeah, so a few things, Robin. One, no one should assume just because Xander got the support that he got from his classmates, which was great, that everything was hunky-dory. As you've already heard, Xander sh was censored, and he should have been had to have censored himself and not be able to talk about who he really is at his commencement speech. Number two, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The law itself was deliberately written to be as vague and as broad as possible. All it says is that there should be no discussion or instruction about gender identity or sexual orientation. The problem is no one knows what that means. And the Florida legislature def deliberately didn't define it. So what you get is what you saw with Xander. It obviously applies to commencement. We saw that just yesterday. And it applies in many, many other circumstances. 
Imagine a kid not like Xander, without Xander's articulateness and talent and confidence, who wants to come out as gay at school. Well, how's that kid gonna, what's that kid gonna do? And how is he gonna react? And it applies to younger kids. I have a son, I'm very proud to say, who's doing great. Uh, he's all grown up now, but when he was a young kid in first grade, he had dyslexia. Learning to read was very, very hard for him. He was very anxious in school. Imagine if at the same time, he also had to be anxious about the fact that he couldn't tell anyone that he has two moms rather than a mom and a dad. Very good That's the kind of stuff that this law is directed at. Oh, thank you, Robbie. Very good point there. And, and Xander, uh, you came out, what, your freshman year, you told a, a teacher? So if the law was in place, yeah. that would not have been able to happen. And how do you think that experience would have been for you, though? First of all, shout out Ms. Ballard. <laughs> Second of all, I wouldn't have come out. And that's the really scary thing. Public schooling is the only place that all children are guaranteed access to. And the majority of the LGBTQ plus community in Florida will go through the public school system. So what this law does is it effectively takes away the only guaranteed safe space from the majority of the entire LGBTQ population here. And that's horrifying because what you then have is so many children being forced to make the choice between coming out unsafely or not coming out at all. And what you're gonna see is kids are gonna choose not to come out at all. And that's the point of the law. It's supposed to silence the queer population here, and it's supposed to push LGBTQ plus children back into the closet. And that's what's horrifying and disgusting because it's our politicians using children as a political pawn, as a way to advance themselves in their career. And it's why I'm working so hard on this advocacy and with this lawsuit because school was an essential place for me. It helped me discover who I was. It helped me be confident to speak like I'm speaking and be who I am. And that should be able to be taken for granted. And the lawsuit is ongoing. The final question, you are heading to Harvard. What are you planning to study, sir? There, I'm gonna be concentrating in government so I can try and fix the same problems I'm trying to fix now. Oh, beautifully said. Xander and Robbie, thank you so much for joining us this morning on GMA. Appreciate it very much. Yes, right back at you, young man, right back at you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.